Since the year 1909, every year the 8th of March has been International Women's Day. The first of such days was organised by the Socialist Party of America to commemorate the previous year's strike by the International Ladies' Garments Workers' Union. And it is this sentiment of remembering women and groups of women who have fought for the betterment of society that International Women's Day still embodies, as well as the opportunity to reflect on what lessons we can learn from these women, where we can go in the future, and what we can do to empower women and fight for women's rights in the future. For me, every year International Women's Day is a call to action. It's a reminder to think about what I can do to make the world a better place. And to share that with you a little bit, I thought today I would do a video all about books that you might like to read this International Women's Day or any other day this year. These books are all by women and I feel as though they embody the spirit of International Women's Day by tackling important issues either in fiction or non-fiction. They are all poignant and impressive pieces of literature that I'm sure you will all enjoy. So without further ado, let's have a look at the books, shall we? The first work I want to share with you is Sister Outsider, Essays and Speeches by Audre Lorde. Audre Lorde was a poet and an essayist and a civil rights activist and a feminist and a gay rights activist. She was was a black lesbian woman who grew up and lived in the United States of America and passed away in 1992, sadly at the young age of 58, yet she still managed to leave behind her an impressive backlist of powerful literature. And this one is non-fiction essays and speeches as opposed to her poetry, although that too would probably be an excellent thing to read this International Women's Day. If you're looking for ways to improve the intersectionality of your feminism, then this book is somewhere you need to go. It deals with sexism, racism and homophobia and all of the intersects between those different issues. Audrey Lorde has a really distinctive voice and a beautiful way of writing and she's someone you can't help but really look up to when you're reading the work of and I think this collection would inspire a lot of you as well as teach you about the different issues she explores. But next I have to mention Virginia Woolf, someone I'm sure all of you are familiar with the name of even if you haven't read any of her work. The work I have to show you is A Room of One's Own and this bind up also includes The Three Guineas. Virginia Woolf published these essays in the early 1900s and they deal with the way in which women are excluded from the arts and academia and the creative aspects of society by lacking the freedom that comes with money because women in Britain didn't tend to have independent means. They couldn't experience or facilitate the same kind of education that men had access to. And although this book was written in the early 1900s, it is still relevant today. It explores the way that lack of income can exclude people from different areas of society, as well as the lack of belief that women deserve to be a part of those areas of society. And although things have come a long way since this work, there's definitely elements of that that still exist today. And it's also important to remember how things were not really that long ago and what we're fighting for. If you're looking for something that you can consume in effectively no time at all that might inspire you to fight against gender inequality in the modern world, then I have We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This tiny book is only 52 pages long and it is essentially what the title suggests. It's a perfect beginner book for anybody who's exploring the idea of feminism and why identifying as such might be an important thing to do. But it's also a nice reminder if you have identified as a feminist for a long time and it's based on the TED talk by the same name that Chimamanda gave. I also believe that this has actually been made mandatory reading in certain Scandinavian schools which I think is just wonderful to hear. But I can't talk about inspirational women without going back to antiquity which might seem like a strange place to find inspirational women given the lack of female writers in the historical record from antiquity. One female author that does survive from ancient Greece however is Sappho. Sappho was an ancient Greek poet from the 6th century BC. And what makes her poetry doubly wonderful is that firstly, it is the poetry of a woman. Women's education was not a priority in ancient Greece. Women did not tend to be authors and their work certainly wasn't spread throughout the continent in the way that men's was. Despite this though, Sappho went against the status quo and wrote stunning poetry. And many of her poems also deal with women being in love with other women. It's where the term sapphic comes from in regards 
to lesbian love and that too is equally wonderful and against the status quo of the time. Uh, women were not encouraged to have romantic or sexual relationships with one another despite the fact that uh, male-male relationships were commonplace in ancient Greece. So what Sappho was doing was incredibly impressive for her time and she is certainly somebody we can all take inspiration from. But if we're going to talk about poignant poetry that deals with serious topics by an amazing female poet, I have to mention somebody is slightly more modern and that is Kate Tempest. This is Kate Tempest's collection Hold Your Own which is in fact actually inspired by Greek myth but her poems are set in the contemporary world and deal with contemporary situations and contemporary characters. Structuring her poems around the theme of different gender norms and gender imbalances and the way in which we force people into different gender roles she explores a variety of topics including war and politics and sexism and sexuality and generally the way in which people are put down in society and her poetry is incredibly moving and visceral and relatable and I cannot recommend it more highly. I realise I haven't mentioned any fiction yet though, I do have some and the next book I think could easily be described as a modern classic and that is the Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. There's a reason why everybody goes on about this book, so if you haven't checked it out yet, I'd still highly encourage you to do so. This is a dystopian novel set in a world where toxins have made most people in society infertile, and a select group of women who are believed to still have the capability of giving birth are passed around wealthy, families as handmaids in the hopes of bearing the husband a child that the family can then raise. It deals with restrictions on procreation rights, it also deals with a very strict class hierarchy, educational restrictions, the handmaids aren't allowed to read in this novel, it tackles a lot of stuff and does it all from the perspective of our main character Offred, which gives us a wonderful in to this world where she's incredibly immersed in it, she is a handmaid and doesn't really see a way out of this, she's just going along with what she believes is what she has to do now. It's an incredibly powerful novel and it's also just incredibly enthralling, engaging and one you won't be able to put down once you've started. If you're looking for more feminist dystopians, another one I would highly recommend is Benefits by Zoe Fairbairns. This one's slightly different as the dystopian time period it is set in is almost now. It was written in the 1970s and travels in time from the 1970s dealing with issues that were threatening women's rights at the time to examine how they might have progressed into the 80s, 90s, 2000s and it's really interesting to see how Zoe Fairbairn speculated the future that we now essentially live in. It too deals with class and particularly the attack on women's procreational rights and it's just another very engaging novel so definitely worth checking out. Lastly for this video though I want to mention a memoir and that is I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou is another American poet and she wrote a seven part memoir, this being the first part which covers her childhood growing up in the south of America when segregation still existed in the 1930s and 40s when World War II happened up until her late teens, early 20s and then the rest of her autobiographies tackle different periods in her life after that. This book deals with sexism but in particular racism but not just that, it is a insight into what is essentially now a period in history. It's not a hopeless book though, it's actually quite a hopeful book and Maya Angelou is just an incredibly inspirational figure. It explores discrimination and oppression on the basis of class, sex and ethnicity. And the perfect one I feel to end this video on. This list could of course gone on and on and on but I'll leave the rest of the recommendations up to you. If you have any more please do leave them in the comments down below for me and for the other people watching this video. Not only will I leave links to the books in the description box, I will also leave links to other media including YouTube channels that I think are educational and inspirational for International Women's Day as well as perhaps some campaigns and websites and things you might be interested in hearing about. So please do look in the description box for all of that stuff. And here's to another year of fighting for change.